Hello, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. So for the full problem and the solution transcript, you can feel free to check the description of this video on our YouTube channel. Uh, so this um, Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week is going to be the last one I am creating, and for that reason, I'm going to combine a lot of the things I've worked on uh, throughout my time here. Uh, so I'm really excited to be sharing that with you. Um, it's also a little sad, I guess, but uh, we're going to be deriving the Bessel Differential Equation from the wave function. Uh, and this is a very cool quantum mechanics-y physics problem as well as a very cool math problem. Um, so getting to the Bessel Differential Equation isn't necessarily that hard, but when we get there, I'm going to then point out a bunch of different things that you can make your own problems out of that can be really fun to solve. So uh, what I've given you, uh, the wave equation, of course. I've also given you some initial conditions. I've given you the boundary condition that at uh, the end of the radius, uh, the wave function should go to zero. I've also given you initial position um, and initial velocity, which is, of course, the derivative uh, with respect to time of the position. Um, and that's about all you need to solve it. So I'm going to start by looking at uh, this first step, the wave equation. And if you were with us a long time ago, I went over um, how to derive the Laplacian, uh, this you know, inverted triangle squared of psi, which is actually means something a lot different. Um, but I derived that in cylindrical coordinates, which I'm then going to show you, and then we're going to confine it to a disk. So uh, I will start by writing that out. Uh, so this is what I got there back in October, and now we need to confine it to a disk. So since we know a disk has a constant z value, um, the second derivative of psi, the second partial derivative of psi with respect to um, z, this is going to be zero because we have a constant z value, so all we're left with is worrying about r and theta. And that's perfect for us because um, we were given a, a psi that is reliant on r, theta, and time, t. So from here, I'm going to start rearranging terms. I'm also going to recognize that I have called this psi something that is separable. I can make this um, the product of some function of r times some function of theta times some function of time. Um, so if we didn't have that, this would be a very different problem. But fortunately, we do have that uh, because I gave it to you. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and recognize that um, I can pull out these r, theta, and t because if you take the partial derivative and only one part of it, is reliant on that particular variable, then you can pull it out, just like it was a constant. It's a partial derivative. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and I have, of course, done this to that wave equation after plugging in uh, this for the left-hand side and taking out uh, this second partial derivative with respect to uh, t. And you end up getting this after you pull out uh, t, which can be pulled out from both of these. Um, and you also pull out theta when you can, you pull out r when you can, and eventually you'll get this once you uh, figure that out. So the next step is to actually group terms together. I'm going to group the t's together, and then I'm going to um, divide out by um, capital R, capital theta. And uh, what that will give you is the following. Uh, so now I get this by shifting around terms a little bit. And then I'm going to arbitrarily call this something, and I'm going to call it negative lambda. Uh, so after I get negative lambda, I can then shift terms around again and uh, kind of make, uh, it's not exactly making the t terms go away, but it's kind of putting it in this, um, because they are hidden there in the lambda, but it is making it a little easier to look at and manipulate. So uh, I'm going to now assert the following. Uh, from that, you get this, and what I did was I shifted terms, and I also multiplied both sides by um, r squared, uh, big theta. Um, yes, uh, r squared, big r, big theta, apologies. Um, and what that does is that gives you uh, the following. And I'm going to do something similar to what I did before with t, but this time I'm going to do it with uh, big theta. Uh, so I'm going to shift terms around until it looks um, so that there's um, big theta on one side and r and other terms on the other side. Uh, so what I do, what um, you get when you do that is the following. Uh, you will get this, um, these terms are equal to negative big theta second partial derivative with, re with respect to theta, little theta, divided by um, big theta again. Um, so what I'm going to do again is name this as some arbitrary thing. I'm going to call it mu. And if you look at how I define theta, I, um, hopefully you can see that um, so the negative theta squared over 
big theta, or not theta squared, uh, negative big theta uh, second partial derivative divided by big theta. That is going to be equal to this n value squared. Uh, so why is that? Um, you could probably convince yourself of that if you went ahead and took the partial derivative uh, with respect to little theta twice from uh, this here, or um, went ahead and took the partial derivative twice with respect to that, and you would see that you would get this negative sign from the flips when you take two partial derivatives of sine or cosine. Um, you would also end up pulling out n terms because of the chain rule. So if you're willing to accept that, then hopefully you're willing to accept that I can name this n squared, and when I put everything back in shift terms like I did before, you get something um, that is pretty cool, I think. Uh, what you get is uh, you will get this. And this is a lot nicer to look at than what we had before, even though we've like renamed everything as lambda mu um, and then later n. Um, this is a lot nicer to look at because we're only looking at, well, quote unquote, only looking at our terms. Um, so this is uh, really nice. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, now rewrite it so that um, these r prime, r double prime, I'm going to put it back in the partial derivatives. And um, I'm going to do that because I'm going to make a substitution that is going to be a lot easier once we can see the whole thing. So I'm going to do that. Uh, so after doing this, I'm now going to make a substitution. Uh, so the substitution I'm going to make is x is equal to square root of lambda r. And what that means is r is equal to x divided by the square root of lambda, of course, because uh, you can just divide both sides by that and convince yourself of that. Um, so now I'm going to uh, notice how that changes. Um, if I want to substitute that in, how, that, how I can change partial of r with respect to dr, with, with respect to r, and part, second partial derivative of r, big r, with respect to uh, little r squared. Um, so uh, looking at the first one, we have done this before. Uh, so the important thing to note, again, is that r is only dependent on little r. So that's why this move is possible. Um, then this, this becomes pretty easy because partial of x with respect to r, partial of x with respect to r is just going to be square root of lambda. And then so if you want to substitute for partial of r with respect to r, um, little r, you get uh, this square root of lambda partial of r with respect to x. So for the second derivative, same story. Uh, you would just take another partial res with respect to r, repeat the same process, you just pull out another square root of lambda, multiply that by square root of lambda, you get lambda. Uh, and you will also get a second partial with r to, with respect to uh, second of x, or x squared. Uh, so plugging that back in will give us a very easy thing to look at, and what you will recognize that is, you will recognize that hopefully as the Bessel differential equation once I plug in the substitution. And this is the result. This is what you get. And that is exactly the Bessel differential equation. Um, so why is this cool? And why did I give this to you as an advanced knowledge problem of the week? Uh, well, it's, um, it's great because it leads to a lot of other things. So we didn't solve the Bessel, uh, the Bessel differential equation, but you can. You absolutely can. I didn't ask you that in the problem, but I'm going to challenge you to think about that right now. Um, I never went over power series, but you would solve this with a power series. So what you would end up is assuming this. Uh, what you would end up is with this power series over here. And then um, you would end up with a recurrence relation after you took the derivative and then the second deriv partial derivative. Um, and by doing that, you could then solve for r of x. Um, I will give you the answer. Um, so this is what you will get for um, r of x after you go through all the motions of doing the power series and substituting it in. And I would strongly recommend you try that out because it is a very fun exercise that I think is cool. And um, you get to work with power series, and that's always fun. Um, another thing I will point out is um, the Bessel um, j sub n of x, Bessel functions, you can define those in other ways. So for example, um, another way of defining this uh, you can define it with this contour integral. And um, a while back, I did. Um, advanced knowledge problem of the week about contour integration. If you carry this out and you um, 
use residue theorem, et cetera, um, and other contour integration strategies, you can also end up uh, with this over here. Um, and one more thing that I will point out <laughs> is uh, the generating function. This is given by this. And this is another way of arriving at this Bessel function uh, that we had before. So those are a bunch of different exercises you can try in your own time, but um, everything kind of connects in this advanced knowledge problem of the week, which is why I really like it so much. Um, so that was it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you can try some of those uh, exercises I gave you at the end um, on your own time. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, if you want to see more problems of the week and advanced knowledge problems of the week, feel free to click up here. Uh, if you want to subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, feel free to click over here. If you want to visit us on centerofmath.org, feel free to click right there. And if you're on a mobile device, there should be I in the top corner up there. If you click those, they should give you those same links. Thank you very much for watching.